In this Helium 10 product research tutorial, I'm gonna show you the three steps that you need to follow to find your first product. Step one, we're gonna use Black Box from Helium 10 to find some products. Step two, we're gonna use Cerebro from Helium 10 to find the best search term to make sure you're analyzing the correct niche. And then step three, we're gonna use X-Ray, which is the Chrome extension to analyze that niche. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what to look for when you're trying to find your first product. So let's kick things off using Black Box. So Black Box is a database discovery tool. So there are millions of Amazon products in this database. And we're gonna use some filters to hopefully come back with a list of products that meet those criteria and that we can consider whether they be viable for our Amazon FBA private label businesses. So go to Helium 10, go to Tools, and then go to Black Box. I've got it as one of my favorites. You can just click the star icon to make it a favorite. If not, it will be here under Product Research. And you'll see I've got a few of these filters highlighted in yellow. And the reason for this, and this is gonna be a common theme throughout this video, is often with Helium 10, there is almost too much data or too many options. So I just wanna focus on the core ones, which I think will help most Amazon FBA beginners. So the first thing we need to do is choose the marketplace that you want to search. So if you're selling on .com, search amazon.com. I'm in the UK, so I'm gonna be searching for opportunities on amazon.co.uk. So make sure you choose the correct marketplace. The next thing you need to do is to select a category or subcategory or multiple categories. So if we click this arrow here, you'll see all of the choices. And if you click the little arrow there, it will show you all of the subcategories as well. So if you have a particular interest or hobby or something that you want to look into, you can filter down using those. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna choose home and kitchen, as this is quite a broad catch-all category and hopefully it will return some interesting products for us to look at. The next filter we need to set is the price. In 2025 and beyond, it can be quite difficult to make money on Amazon at lower price points. So in the UK, I recommend sellers put a minimum filter of 20 pound. If you're in the US, you might wanna go for say $25 or maybe a bit higher. So I'm going with 20 pound for this video. And a max, I'm gonna put 40 pound in just to exclude any super expensive products. And you'll see there's lots of other filters here that I completely ignore. The next one I want you to look at is this one on the right hand side, which is ASIN sales. So ASIN sales, is a number of units per month that individual product is selling. So for a new seller, usually a good range to target is somewhere between 100 units per month because below that, there's probably not a huge amount of points selling that product because you're not gonna make that much money. Anywhere up to around 300 units per month. And the reason I say that for a new seller is above 300 units per month, you get to four, five, 600 units per month. You need an awful lot of money to invest in inventory because really you need three months of inventory at any one time. And also you're gonna need to invest heavily in PPC to try and match the sales of existing listings so you have a chance of outranking them in the search results. So we don't wanna set that bar too high. So 300 is a good maximum, but somewhere between one to 300 units per month is usually a good choice for most new sellers. On the left here, we have shipping size. And these filters will vary depending on what country you're in. So depending on your marketplace, look at the Amazon FBA rate cards and see what they charge. But in the UK, we generally just avoid the oversized categories. So we avoid large oversize. Actually, we do actually consider small oversize because there are some cost effective tiers within that. So I'm gonna leave small oversize ticked, small letter, large letter, both of the envelopes or all three of the envelopes are good. Standard parcel, leave standard oversize, extra large envelope and small parcel. And the idea is by avoiding these categories, you don't end up selling a product where the fees are absolutely insane. And you can put weight filters in as well if you want. I'm certainly not against doing that. In the UK, the threshold tends to be 1.9 kilograms or below is where the most cost efficient tiers are, but that will vary for every single marketplace. Like I say, there are lots of other fields that you may want to look into, but as a very basic, a good place to start, this will get the ball rolling. So let's hit the search button and see what comes back. And as you can see, we've got 500 products to look through. So anytime this says 500, you know there are more than 500 because that is the absolute maximum. So feel free to experiment with the other filters to reduce this list further if you want to. And all we do is we start looking through these products to see if there's anything that may interest us. So I'm just gonna do this now. I'll fast forward if it takes me too long. If not, I'll kind of, I'll give you my thought process as I go. So the first product here is a gift set. I'm not really interested in gifts as the demand won't be stable or usually won't be stable throughout the year. We've got a free tier metal storage rack, probably too big. Depends how it 
disassembles and breaks down into a box. So it certainly might be something you want to look into. Acrylic paints, I'm not really interested in anything with liquids in. Same with that one. A beach towel, that's probably going to be seasonal. A wood laptop tray for bed. So potentially, so that's the first half interesting product. So I'm going to click that little arrow there. That's going to open it on Amazon and we'll come back to that in a moment. The next one we've got is a magnetic window cleaner. So I'm going to open that as well. And just quickly, just to go back, all of the filters that we entered, if we look at this list here, we can see the price point is above £20, which is what we wanted. The ASIN sales are somewhere between one and 300 units. So it supplied the filters that we wanted it to apply. Now the products we've opened, these are only individual products. So we can't just base our decision on a single product. We have to assess the niche in its entirety. And to do that, we have to find the search term that customers or the main search term, as customers use many, many search terms, the main search term a customer would use to find these products. Then we can look at all of the products in that niche and get a better picture of those overall stats. So the first thing we need to do is find the right search term. Now, often this is something you can guess just by looking at the title or just start typing it into the auto suggest and they'll come up. But the foolproof way to do this is to take it through to Cerebro from Helium 10. So you can either go to Cerebro manually by going to tools and then choosing Cerebro here, or if it's not in your favorites list, it is here under keyword research. Alternatively, if you've got the plugin installed on your browser, scroll down, it will load the Helium 10 extension here. And if you click on this keywords link, this will pull this particular product straight through to the Cerebro for you to analyze further. And I'm gonna show you how to find the best search term to analyze. And you can see, as with black box, we have lots of different filters, but I only want you to look at one, and this is the search volume. And if we put in a minimum search volume of a thousand, that should get rid of all of the noise. And what this is gonna do, this is gonna look up this product and look at all of the keywords that it's ranked for. And we should be able to tell by looking at the positions of these keywords in the search results, whether that keyword is relevant and if it is, whether it has a high enough search volume to be the main search term that we want to analyze. So let's click search and see what results come back. So the results are in, if we scroll down, if we look at the organic rank column, by the way, if you're loading Cerebro for the first time, you've probably got lots of different columns. So just click on the customize button and you can deselect lots of them. So I just look at search volume, sponsored ranks, as that tells me if they're currently paying to advertise for that search term, and then organic rank here. And if we look at this, these guys are ranked fifth for magnetic window cleaner. Now there isn't the highest search volume. We do have window cleaner at 20,000 or just under 20,000 and window cleaning equipment at 26,000. But these guys are only ranked 153rd for window cleaner and 201st for window cleaning equipment. So I would say based on this, magnetic window cleaner with a lower search volume, but still higher than all of these, and this organic rank position, and the fact they're paying for sponsored ranks as well, this is probably gonna be the most accurate search term to analyze. So what we do now is we bring that search term through to Amazon, and this is where we fire up X-Ray. So this will use the X-Ray Chrome extension. So click on the X-Ray shortcut at the top. If not, there'll be a, a, like a blue circle on the right-hand side of your browser, and choose X-Ray Amazon product research. And this will fire up the Chrome extension, which is where you'll probably spend most of your time when you're doing Amazon FBA product research. And again, when this loads, you're gonna see lots and lots of data. And if you click customize here, you can copy this if you want. I've taken out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine columns I think are unnecessary when you're doing your product research. And then what we do is we would analyze this niche. Now, when you're analyzing any niche, the first things you wanna look for are price point. So proof that products sell at a particular price point. There's no point entering a niche where I think selling for 10 pound. Uh, two, demand. So that's what we enter that one to 300 filter. And then thirdly, is it seasonal? Those are the three checks you want to do first. And then if all of those check out, you'll look at the rest of the data. So for this particular product here, we want to filter out the sponsored results. I always hide the sponsored results as they dilute things. I want, only want to see how the organic results are performing. And we can see straight away, the price point here looks okay. 26.99, 27.99, 20.99, 39.97, 34.99. .99. There is some proof that there, there are products in this niche selling above 20 pound. However, this is the issue with this niche. The demand drops off very quickly. I think this is the product here, Pinewick at 100 plus. There's a few other products selling 
and then the rest of these say NA. And if they say NA, that usually means they're below 50 sales per month as this is Amazon's own data. So straight away, I will just cross this product off as the demand does not run deep enough. You do not want your success on Amazon to depend on landing in these top five positions. You wanna see demand running nice and deep, maybe down to the top 15 or so positions. So I'm gonna close this one off and we do have one other product left, don't we? So we tried the, we tried the magnetic window cleaner. Nice product, but poor demand. And then we also had this wood laptop tray, lap desk, desk for laptop. So this one's a lot harder to know, like just guessing what the search term will be. So let's again, take this through to Cerebro. We scroll down to the Helium 10 section here, click on keywords. This will pull you through to Cerebro. And then we put in that minimum search volume. And the reason we put in the minimum search volume filter is about that, this will return, well, let me just show you quickly. This is returning hundreds of different keywords, many with super low search volume. So these certainly aren't the search terms you want to be analyzing. So if we put the minimum search volume as a thousand again, and then scroll back down, we can see these guys are ranked 24th for laptop tray, and that's at three and a half thousand volume. We've got laptop table at the 53rd at 4,000. Um, and then we start to get quite high up in the rank. So. I'm going to go with, we do have laptop stand here at nearly 60,000 and sometimes not all products will rank for the best search terms. So if you're not certain, you can look at that niche separately and see if the products are comparable. So it might just be that these guys aren't very good at ranking and laptop stand is actually super relevant, but I don't think it is from what this is saying. Laptop tray is very different to a stand. So I'm going to go with this one here. They rank 24th and this is the highest search volume and I feel most relevant to the listing as well. We've got bed table for laptop. These are a bit on the low side. So let's go laptop tray. And then we're going to analyze this in x-ray. And if you're not sure whether you are using the correct search term from a relevancy perspective, just look at the other products in the search results. Are they comparable to the product you're going to be analyzing? If they're not, you're probably using the wrong search term. So let's fire up x-ray and hopefully there will be a bit more demand in this niche. So do the three treks that we talked about. Price point, 19 99 22 99 29 20 pound, 33 So we have good evidence. We have good evidence. I like to talk about what I call a landing zone when I'm looking at Amazon. And that is at least five other sellers hitting the price point or above that I'm aiming for and also the demand levels that I'm looking at as well. So the price point, that is good. Recent purchases, this is much better. 500, 200, 600, 300. So this, you've got plenty of demand at 100 plus, two or three at 300 plus and 200 plus. So this would be a good niche to target, say 150 to 300 units per month, I think would be a reasonable target if I was entering this niche. So tick the first two and the final check was seasonality. So we put that over the one year view. There is a pickup in Christmas, which at Christmas, which is absolutely fine. I do not mind seeing a Q4 peak as long as demand is fairly stable the rest of the year. And at the moment, we're probably at the lowest point of the year and demand is still good. So as long as you know when the seasonality is, you can plan stock around that. So that is absolutely fine to have a Q4 peak. And if that checked out, I would then do the rest of the analysis. So if you're looking for your first product on Amazon or first Amazon private label product that you wanna sell on Amazon for your own business, this is probably the most important part of the video as I'm gonna tell you all of the things that I look at when I'm analyzing a product. So starting from left to right, the first thing, are all of these products comparable? There's no point comparing lots of products or looking at the data for lots of products if they aren't comparable. And sometimes if you're using the incorrect search term, they won't be comparable, but we know they all are. The next thing is brand. We look at this to make sure that no one particular brand is dominating the niche or that products aren't just selling because they're a big well-known brand. So what I like to see is this, a complete mixture of different brands that I've never heard of because it shows pretty much anyone can get ranked and sell in this niche. We've already looked at price and recent purchases. Some people prefer to judge demand based on revenue instead, but ultimately revenue is just your price multiplied by your recent purchases. But if that's what you prefer to do, that's absolutely fine. Title character count, this is not one I should have on. That is not needed in the search results. Let's just hide that. Seller country, I do like to see some sellers from your own country. If these are all CN, that can indicate that the price point has been driven so low in that niche that it can be hard to make a profit. Now that is not a foolproof rule as there are many Chinese sellers that pose as UK sellers or whichever marketplace you're in. But it's always nice to see a few GB 
dotted about in this column. Your fee, so this is your fulfillment fee plus your referral fee. I want this to be at a maximum around about 30% of your selling price here. So if you're selling at $19.99, this is a fraction on the higher side, $22.99, it's not too bad. Now remember, if you're a new seller in the UK, you will be paying 20% VAT on top of these fees. So include that in your overall profit calculations. Now let's scroll over to the right-hand side a bit more. We've got the ratings, so the actual number of ratings here or reviews. Ratings and reviews, the only difference is a rating is Anyone can leave a star rating. Some people also leave text with it and then it's called a review. So what I like to do is avoid niches where everyone's got five star ratings because it's very, very difficult to maintain five stars. And if you want five visual stars to appear on the listing, you need to be at 4.8 or above. So I have no concerns here that anyone is gonna dominate these sales purely because they got five stars because everyone is averaging 4.8, or sorry, below 4.8. So they're getting four and a half stars. Now the actual number of reviews this is something to consider. However, what I like to see is just proof that sellers without crazy numbers, i.e. four figures and above, can get ranked and can make sales. And actually, this first seller here with only 48 reviews says to me it's possible for a new entry in this niche to get ranked and to make sales. If I saw every single listing was like this at two or 3,000 reviews, I would be more wary. But the most important question you need to ask yourself is how similar is your product to the other products in the niche? If it's identical, reviews and price point matter a lot, lot more. But if you've taken a product, you've made it better, you've given it additional functions and features that are gonna benefit the customer, and it has a visual selling point to draw the eye, the review count is less important as people are gonna judge your product on those factors and not just the number of reviews. We've got the size tier here, which basically backs up what we're seeing in the fees column, and we've already filtered out all of the ones that we don't want, the big oversized products. Fulfillment, the, there are two things to keep an eye out for. One, if you see lots of MFN, so for example, if you go into yoga mats, because they're quite big products, although they're not very heavy, Amazon charge a lot to fulfill them. So there's lots of uh, sellers that are basically fulfilling the orders themselves from their own premises. So we wanna see plenty of evidence of FBA sellers as that's normally a positive sign you'll be able to do well in that niche. And also we don't wanna to see too many AMZ listings as it can be difficult to compete if you've got five or 10 AMZ listings. And I might not mind seeing two or three, but as soon as you go above that, I generally would avoid that niche. Again, dimensions just backs up what we're seeing with the, the size tier and the fees and the same with weight as well. Always keep in mind the actual weight of the product. Amazon look at two things, either the actual weight or the dimensional weight. And to get the dimensional weight, you take all of the, the dimensions here and you times them together. So it'd be 60 times by 7.7 .7 times by 37, divide it by 5,000, and that'll give you the dimensional weight in kilograms, which is usually more than the actual weight. And Amazon will always take the heavier of the two when they're choosing which rate card tier to put your product in. And finally, on the right-hand side, we have the creation date. There is another column called seller here, or seller age, which we can put on, which does the calculations for us. And it will tell us how many months old each listing is. And what I like to see here is a good mix. If everything is super old, it can show it's difficult for a new listing to enter into this niche. Or if everything is a brand new listing, it could suggest this is a fad product or it's short-lived or there's a high turnover of sellers for a unknown reason. So this, this is a good mixture. We've got some new sellers here, nine months old here. This one's 19 months, 14 months, but also some that have been here, you know, 92 months and 108 months. So this is absolutely fine as well. So that is how to use Helium 10 to one, find products using black box, two, find the correct search term to analyze using Cerebro, and then three, to analyze the product using the X-Ray Chrome extension. Now, if you haven't purchased Helium 10 yet, there'll be a link in the pin top comment with the latest offer. When you click it, it'll automatically load the offer, whatever it is. I think as of recording this video, it's 40% off, so check that out. And if you wanna start Amazon FBA, but you're not sure about all of the steps, I'm gonna pop up a step-by-step -step guide now that will show you everything you need to do to set up and start your own Amazon FBA business. And I'll see you guys over there.